Hey everybody, welcome to Design with the Bard. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use my personal game for this one. Um, so, first of all, welcome. Uh, this is a bit of a new new show. I'm not entirely sure how long I can keep this particular one up. New and interesting game mechanics are kind of hard for me to spot sometimes. Uh, I haven't really done design in a while, but someone mentioned it because I've... Uh, you know, went to college for game design for a little while uh, before I switched over to a history major, and I thought whatever it'll be a lot of fun. And I had a little bit of inspiration from uh, this game actually. Um, we'll be doing Darkest Dungeon, if you haven't noticed already. Uh, we're going to be talking specifically about the stress mechanic and the way that that uh, mess that that uh, changes how uh, something that, by all rights, should actually just be a simple dungeon crawler um, changes how that completely, uh, just completely changes how that works um, and takes it from something simple to a really interesting and, and complex affair. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, hold on a second, my laptop is being weird again. Let me set that. Uh, but anyway, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, the stress mechanic in this game um, is basically just another meter you have to uh, deal with and have to keep level for the most part. And it can have different effects on the game based on uh, how stressed out your characters get um, or how you keep the stress managed. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways to do that which we'll get it to in just a second. Um, the, like I said before, um, the fact that they use this mechanic uh, at all, the fact that they built the game around this mechanic, uh, completely changes the standard dungeon crawl setup. Uh, hey, Goblin King. Um, but it completely changes the, the standard dungeon crawl setup, uh, and makes for a really interesting roguelike experience, which this game was obviously going for. Um, but anyway, so... Stre I'm going to use this gesture just to point stuff out for a little while. So, the stress mechanic itself is just a meter that fills up to 200, and the main two points uh, in combat and for uh, adventuring and stuff like that that matter are stress level of 200 and a stre or stress level 100 and stre stress level of 200. Uh, when a character hits stress level 100, they basically uh, there's this really interest or this really stark change in the game for a minute. You get an image of your character um, sort of focusing a little bit on uh, or sort of like cowed over a little bit, uh, and then it snaps into either the affliction or the virtue that they got out of it. Um, and then when it hits, well, which we'll talk about later, uh, and when the stress, or their stress hits 200, uh, things change, or instead of getting another affliction or virtue or something like that, they have a heart attack. Um, and based on... Uh, <sighs> Sorry, uh, which takes their hit points down to zero immediately. And their stress is reduced a little bit, but not a whole lot. So they can have several heart attacks just kind of chained into one another. Um, I forgot to post all over the place about this. Sorry, uh, sorry that this is a little bit, a little bit worse set up. Um, I just bought a snake recently, and uh, someone I used to know a while ago who's really into snakes... Um, basically jumped my ass for the wrong betting, uh, which led into a whole thing on getting different things fixed and figuring out things that I've been doing wrong, which is kind of big. So give me just a second to post some stuff and I'll get right back to where I was. So. T 
TV. Select. Come on, my fingers are being awful today. Creepy bard. Let that load. Post that. Twitch. Or yeah, Twitch. Oh god, what the hell? Shit. Shut up. Oh man. Whew. Sorry about that. Importance and intricacies of the stress. There we go. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a Twitter account now. Um, it's just me posting stuff from the, the Twitch page. Um, but anyway, back to where we were. So, like I said, stress caps at 200, heart attack, hit points go to zero, bad things happen. Um, based on... Uh, and like I said, when it hits 100, uh, you get affliction or virtue. Um, so, based on... Uh, whatever happens, I really shouldn't be using this one, but whatever. Uh, based on whatever happens in certain settings, how things work out, uh, different characters get different... Well, that's annoying. Is Mortimer... No, this is a totally different character. Okay, I should get... Do I have uh, another frontliner? Yes. And a midliner, I think. Vixie, that's it. Yeah, we'll just send these guys in, and we'll just do one of these smaller ones. Uh, that looks useful. Um, but yeah, based on hitting 100, or based on hitting 100, based on different items you have, based on uh, different, a lot, uh, a handful of different things, um, your character will either uh, get an affliction, which is a negative debuff of some kind, or they'll get a go away. Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, they'll either get a debuff or a buff based on certain stats they've got. Um, afflictions can be pretty much any number of negative things that can happen. Um, they can basically just start stressing out more over everything. They can get afraid of everything. They can get fearful, um, which makes them move around in combat a lot more, usually away from things. Uh, they can get masochistic, where they start cutting themselves. They can get selfish, which makes them move forward during combat sometimes. A uh, couple of other things that end up happening. Uh, you'll see here that I've got plus 15 virtue chance on this guy. That's always nice. Um, so that's one of the things that can happen. Or they can uh, basically just rise to the occasion, sort of, and end up um, you know, getting a virtue instead. A virtue is pretty much just the exact opposite of an affliction. They can uh, have any number of positive things, uh, healing over time. Um, oh shit, I forgot anti venoms. Oh well. Uh, healing over time, things like that. And when they do end up with a virtue, uh, their stress is reduced phenomenally, which is really handy in longer games. Um, and the different lengths of dungeons play into this. Uh, they change the way the different characters interact with the stress mechanic. And just generally, like I said, the entire game is built around this mechanic. Um, and you have a lot of different ways to manage stress. Um, certain characters have, uh, specifically, certain, um... Certain characters have different abilities they can use in combat, specifically the, um... <sighs> the Jester, who has an ability that, uh, right out the gate can just reduce 10 stress, and the... Haha, <laughs> dead. Um, she got a crit, so, as you'll see, a couple of these guys just reduce their stress a little bit, uh, which is really handy. But, um... They'll have different things happen based on different things. Um, like I said, they have other uh, a lot of different ways to handle stress. Uh, the main ways are in combat, you can get the... Well, one of the useful ways, I suppose, is in combat you can use the Jester, and he'll reduce it by 10 or something like that in the middle of a fight. It's always handy. Um, a map is really handy. Um, 
But yeah, that'll happen. And then um, there's also the Houndmaster, who has an ability that can reduce the stress of the entire group, if you get lucky. Um, different things like that. And, uh, like I said, another way that stress can be managed a little bit is through the crit mechanic. Uh, this can be a double-edged sword, however, as sometimes you'll crit. Which is great because it'll reduce the stress of some of your guys and uh, some of your characters, not by a whole lot, but by enough. Um, the other way, though, or the other thing that can happen though, is that your enemies can crit, and when they crit, your guys in the same manner can suffer um, debuffs or can suffer from uh, different. What do I got here? Yeah, can suffer from. Uh, <sighs> increased stress. You have to sort of balance different things around it. Um, for instance, radiate, uh, the light mechanic plays into it as well. Uh, let's just make him easier to hit. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have as much as many notes for this as I would like. I'm not out of them yet, but um, we'll run out soon enough. Um, critical hits. I already talked about that. Um, but you, the the more active ways that you can manage stress, rather than having um, you know characters in the field doing things, um, is to ooh goddamn is to upgrade certain buildings and put points into those. Uh, the buildings that you can upgrade are the ones that affect it specifically are the tavern and the Abbey. Um, see, there we go. Got a crit. I think you got a crit. I wasn't really paying attention there. Let's go ahead and just heal everybody up, because they're all bleeding. Um, critical heals also manage stress a little bit, but that falls into the whole critical thing. Uh, sometimes when you get kills, you can get a little bit of a stress uh, management thing going on. Um, I don't know how to predict that just yet, but it is a thing that happens. Uh, but like I said, you can upgrade the Abbey or the t uh, Tavern, and one of the things that plays into that is the um, Caretaker. The Caretaker will, each, each week you're in town, randomly, uh, yeah, randomly take up a slot in one of the stress management areas. Um, this could be the Tavern, this could be the Abbey, this could be any of them prayer, the brothel, whatever. Um, any of those points are ripe for him to take up a slot. Now, normally this wouldn't be a big deal because, hey, whatever, we'll just go ahead and put that guy somewhere else. But this plays into the quirk mechanic. And you can have positive and negative quirks. Um, positive quirks are things like plus one crit buff, no stress penalty when walking backwards, Minus stress and damage or bonus damage against Eldritch. You know, different character traits your character can have. Um, and negative quirks can be things like death blow resistance down or increased stress against unholy, which I think. No, these are just humans. Um, increased stress against unholy, things like that. Um, but uh, the there are other quirks you can get, which are things like. No, no, I can't. Uh, other other quirks you can get that are negative quirks that make it so that your characters will or won't use certain areas, or will or won't um, like only use specific areas. So there are some quirks that say your character will only uh, reduce stress in a brothel. They'll only reduce stress drinking. They'll only reduce stress meditating. Um, or on the opposite hand, there will be things that say. Oh, your character will only reduce stress while, uh, or won't, or no, your character is not allowed in the brothel or the bar, things like that, uh, and all those, they're associated with different areas, um, but this is now worthless. So, m stress is, is at the heart of this game, which is really interesting, actually, um, there are a couple other things that are really big for stress and stress management. Um, most notably, the light mechanic. Um, the light mechanic is a way in which you can, one, 
brighten and dim the screen, which is kind of rude. Um, but two, this is a way that uh, you can get more uh, gold, more loot, that kind of thing, but it increases your stress levels depending on how dar dark it is. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of reduce, like right now we're at uh, dim light, which increases stress, but we get a bonus to scouting and we get a bonus to monster surprise, or monster surprised. That's weird. Slow reflexes? Okay. So now that it's shadowy, we get better chances at loot and we get better chances at crits, but we're doubled up on stress. Monster accuracy and damage is higher, and the heroes are, are surprised a lot easier. Go ahead and take it down just a little bit more and a little bit more. Pitch is black. Now we have maxed out stress, maxed out monster accuracy and damage, maxed out chances of being surprised, but we have much higher chances of getting good loot, and we have much higher chances of critting, which is odd, I suppose, but that's what happens when it's dark, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and just light this back up. In radiance, may we find victory. And okay. So uh, a lot of the enemies end up having different abilities that can reduce stress too. Um, I think one of my favorites is uh, in the... Uh, say crypt, but I think it's actually called the ruins. In the ruins there's a... Uh, there's a monster called the Doomsayer, um, which is just literally a dude in a stretch or in a straight jacket, just screaming at you about the end of the world. Um, he has abilities that hits one dude, all dudes, whatever. Uh, different characters will get stressed out for different reasons based on what their abilities are, what their quirks are. Um, this guy, I don't know if this guy has. Oh yeah, fear of unholy things like that. So you have to sort of like manage the way stress ha works out um so like with this guy he's got holy orders so he's got minus 20 percent stress even if he does somehow get stressed out he has a, a higher virtue chance things like that two gone we don't have a key for this that sucks um <sighs> like i said certain things uh end up causing different things to happen based on stress. Um, I don't think I'll be able to trip anything in this particular playthrough, but we'll see. Um, if I can, that would be awesome, but... Oh, is the Doomsayer in all areas? Because I don't know where everything is just yet. I just know that the Doomsayer shows up a lot over there. Must be like the cultist or something. Oh damn, this is the most immortal dog I've ever seen. Ooh, man. God damn. Look at him dodge. Sign this guy up for dodgeball. There we go. We'll take those, we'll take this. Um, oh, right. Uh, other things can affect stress, like, say, if we were to just say, no, we don't want to do this quest right now, we're going to go ahead and abandon it, all of these guys would get a little bit more stressed. Not super stressed, just a little bit more, just enough to discourage you from doing it too often. We did get a lot of cash out of that, though. Not quite as much as would have been nice, because we would have got the gold, but... All well, these guys went up about 10, I think. Maybe 20. And then another thing that happens based on stress is based on the stress levels you have when you leave, you have a higher chance of getting negative um, quirks, like weak grip, which causes your melee skills to not crit as much, curious, he will just dive at uh, books and things like that that you find while you're walking around. I don't know how they got diseased too, but whatever. And this is a perfect chance to show off. Um, oh shit! Tavern's free. Mardi Gras going on. And like I said, this is a perfect time to show off. Um, you know how how to hand or manage stress. Um, so we're lucky. The uh, caretaker is probably in the abbey somewhere. Yeah, here he is. And like I said, he takes up a slot somewhere. 
don't really ever know where, just somewhere. Oh, she only drinks. What a bitch. I think Raybo probably would have liked one of those, but we're going to put him in the sanitarium to get rid of lethargy. All the leeches. 10k, so I don't want to spend it. And yeah, there, that's, for the most part, that's how it works out. Um, oh, camping. I totally forgot. Uh, when you're on longer missions, you can, you end up with a fireplace that you take with you. Or a campfire. I do love abominations, but I don't think we've got any. Uh, sort people by level real quick. I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't have another full on group that I could use there. We'll have to do one of the bigger ones. Um, short. It's not really one. Of, medium. There we go. We'll go ahead and take a group in for this and try. Yeah, this is what we have for him. Okay, so we'll put him here. Hey, we'll go back here. He will go here. And Dismas will go here. Um,. And we'll use this to talk about campfires real quick. Campfires are another way that you have to uh, manage stress, to manage all kinds of different things. Um, it's basically just a way to counteract long dungeons. So once a dungeon gets so many squares into it, it's classified for, uh, as a uh, short, a medium, or a large or a long dungeon. And you get campfire, the number of campfires you get is based off of how long it is. So, we get to go like however long until you decide to go camping and then you can hit the campsite. Which we will try to hit as quickly as possible, I forget what I'm supposed to be doing here. Animal shrines? Okay, we'll go this way first then. Alright, we hit a trap. That's annoying. Uh, he's bleeding. I don't think he's got any... We don't have that person with us, so... There we go. We got lucky. He got a positive quirk, but we're not in the wield right now, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not 100% sure why stress just kind of goes up while you're in the dungeon, but I'm sure there's a reason. I haven't figured it out yet. And strike the torch. Um, this is another one of those characters that can hit stress across all characters. Um, the Swine Marcher. Bleed these guys real quick. It will, hopefully, I won't kill it right off the bat, but. Whew, that's annoying. Let's see. Yep, here we go. Drums of Doom, but yeah, see he strikes all of you guys, hits all of them for stress damage while he also hits them for health damage. Um, just adds another layer to everything that you need to worry about. And it can be super frustrating, um, especially because it has a cascade effect. So if I can get him to stress out first, that'd be great. Um, basically what happens is once you hit 100, then you have a character. The character will be tested, and if they crack and get an affliction, then whatever. Um, then what ends up happening is they uh, can affect the stress of everybody in the party. That doesn't always happen, but it's pretty common um, when a character stresses out. There's that morale boost for when you. <sighs> Kill something. Go ahead and go this way. Let's see, bleeds a little bit. Trap. Okay, that's all I want. Oh, uh, I guess he's greedy or something. Okay, well, at least I was able to pick up everything. Uh, I never use these. Get out of here. What's his deal? Um, Mania, Dud Hitter, Faithless, Slow Draw, Manic, Pluto Mania, okay. Go ahead and strike up another one of these torches. 
I don't like letting torch light get too low, or else it fucks up really hard. You get a lot of stress and whatnot. Break that shrine down, gives us more room. Uh, that's another thing. The... Oh, sweet quest location right there, too. Uh, your inventory actually also plays into uh, the stress mechanic. So... If you're carrying a lot of things, it becomes harder to manage the different stat debuffs that happen. So, bleed, things like that. And taking that kind of damage out of combat uh, also reduces your stress a little bit. As well as just natural wear and tear after a little while. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying hold up, but fuck that guy. Whew. We're going to keep walking this way just because it's going to force us to have some stress issues. Let's... Oh. Okay, then. He's just going to just gonna attack that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and snuff out the torch entirely because we know we're not... God damn. What is it with this guy? Okay, so we got a map of where a battle area is, at least. Uh, what the fuck is this deal? Curious. Okay. Well, that's annoying. Um, we'll go ahead and knock down the torches for a little bit so that we can sort of amp up their stress a little bit. See if we can't make one break. That's disarmed. Nope. Uh, successfully tearing apart traps also helps with that. Nothing over here. So we got to walk all the way back. <sighs> Shit. Tired today. I don't know why I keep saying today. I'm pretty much always tired anymore. At this time of night. Alright, see, there's a battle happening over here. So, maybe he'll break. This feels like a weird social experiment. Like, I'm, what the fuck is that? Well, that's fucking new. I'm gonna shoot it. Okay, um... Debuff marked... Howl? Is that a stress attack? Yes it is! Ooh, he might break. Go ahead and bleed both of those guys. Um, I'm deliberately not healing up his, uh... His shit right now, so... Hopefully we'll get a little bit of... A little bit of something out of that. Okay, so a crit. Handy. Heal him up a bit. <sighs> of course, now he's bleeding. Um, mark him while we're at it. Doesn't seem to get stress in combat when he's bleeding, so that's cool, I guess. Alright then. Just fucking ruin his day. Uh, crit by the enemy team. Got all of these guys stressed out. As it do. He doesn't have any sort of healing, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use him for bleed damage right now. Uh, he only heals himself, so whatever. That dodged. Hopefully he doesn't die before the end of this, because I don't like him. <sighs> okay. Howl. Okay. With a little bit of luck. Yep, 17, 11, 11. Okay. That's going to trip both of these guys. So his resolve is tested and masochistic. Yeah. And he's getting tested. Masochistic. Okay, so he's probably actually going to die because he'll cut himself. So that'll be fun. But yeah, these are the kind of things... Um, which actually brings me to one of the things I wanted to talk about specifically was that, um, that shot we just got to see of those guys having their little moment. Um, from a design perspective, that's actually fucking fantastic. Uh, because what that does is it, it creates, um, not a, it creates an emotional through line. Uh, for the for the character and the player, 
Uh, normally, you would just not care, most likely, that that character was about was having a moment. But uh, having the two separate moments, the one where the character has to sit is, is like contemplating and pensive. One where he's contemplating and pensive, um, and the uh, the scene where he goes one way or the other, the change in music, all of that tone, it contributes to this feeling of stress. Um, and there we go, some more. Nellen's getting tested. Like I said, this is that cascade effect. <laughs> Well, that that didn't help at all. Um, but it, it contributes to this feeling of stress. Uh, the sharp change in tone can contribute to stress. But it's also really important to note that virtues uh, happen in the same way. So if you have a character who uh, gets a virtue instead of a... Hmm. These don't stack? Wow, it's weird. We'll go ahead and do that. That's fine. Um, if you have a character who gets a virtue, uh, he also has a moment. Then either then instead of chiming low and uh, being a red screen, it flashes bright and chipper and a white screen. Um, this is actually really important to creating that emotional through line for stress. Um, because otherwise, uh, you would always know that the character is about to... We're going to go ahead and make the campfire here. Uh, you would always know that the character is about to go through a stressful moment. And that doesn't, that doesn't create that same through line. Because the... Uh, hold on a second. Reduce stress. Uh... I'll flip a coin, why the hell not? Nope, that wasn't good. Alright, uh, <laughs> uh, like I said, these are ways to, you know, combat stress a little bit in game. Uh, you can use these rest, uh, respite points to affect the stress of different characters. So here, I'm reducing his stress because I know these guys are already freaking out. Um, and as you can see, that takes his actual mask away, which is cute. Um, yeah, we'll just keep focusing on his stress. I don't think anybody else has anything. Yeah. Um, I said keeps cascading. Um, so yeah, the camping mechanic lets you uh, handle stress a little bit while... Um, you know, your characters are still gonna end up with it, but like I was saying, the the virtue mechanic helps to reinforce that stressfulness for the player, because you're actually hopeful for a minute that you'll be able to actually, you know, not have your characters be stressed out, uh, because you don't want them to be, because that that sucks. It doesn't. It just makes the game harder. Um, more of these guys. More than a weary trailer. What the hell is that? Oh. 500 steps with one hero. Cute. Um, but yeah, everything in the game sort of plays into this stress mechanic, um, which is why, you know, the light mechanic uh, physically reduces the, or visibly reduces the light on the screen rather than just has a negligible effect, um, which is why all of these different things happen the way they do. Mark him real quick. And it can be... It can be a little bit annoying sometimes. Um, they also don't let you mess with the gamma. Like, uh, I feel like that should be something that's like an obvious choice, but in reality, I think it's just they didn't want to mess with it. Um, push. Confidence surges as the enemy oh man. But yeah, um, you know, I don't really think I've got anything else I want to talk about. 
Uh, let's see. Let me go over my note. What little notes I have again, real quick. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, caretaker, virtual affliction, heart attacks, tested image, uh, crits. Uh, yeah, for the most part, I think I've got pretty much everything uh, agreed or figured out here. So I guess for now we'll just keep playing um, just until this uh, dungeon's done. Hopefully, using everybody as uh, you know a way to explain stuff. Uh, I don't really think the voice guy is there to contribute to stress. Uh, I think the voice guy is actually there, the narrator is there just to uh, contribute to the atmosphere. Uh, largely because he doesn't really say anything in regards to... or he's He doesn't have anything that he does that's specific to the stress mechanic. He has things that he does that just, like, contribute with everything. So he, you know, does stuff with the stress mechanic a little bit. He does stuff whenever somebody whenever something happens that can be useful whenever something happens it'd be bad he just talks all of the time and I think that's more to uh, go with the art style and the sort of storybook feel that they've been building here but I could be wrong uh, I have no idea how to I, I've no one really cares about authorial intent so but yeah the voice guy no, I don't think he, he's there to contribute to stress. Because, see, he just did something when I killed a dude. Like, he will just talk all the time. Um, the narrator is, is pretty... Is, the narrator is a good choice. It fits the, the archetype... Or, it fits the, like, concept. It fits the thematic, uh, like, region and everything. The storybook feel that the game tries to... The sort of dark storybook feel that the game tries to have. Um, but it's it's not there to increase stress. It's there to... It's not there to mess with the stress mechanic or the theme at all. Just the the art direction. Hysterical blindness, no. Diseases are an interesting choice, but I don't feel like they were necessary. Um, everything else in the game like messes with stress in some way, shape, or form. Um, and these basically just punish you for being diseased. Which, I mean, whatever, that's fine. It's not a big deal, I guess. Um, it's just odd. Like, na uh, accuracy if stress is above 70 uh, is reduced. That's, you know, a thing. Um, that contributes. But for the most part, I don't know, I feel they could have done without it. Though that may just be me whining about the game being hard. I don't know. Oh wow, he's dead. He's very dead, which is fine, because he's died before, actually. Um, I got lucky the other day and got a, a thing that happened that brought up his... or brought him back to life. He's not dead yet. Okay. Well, he's... definitely making people uncomfortable, if nothing else. You take out that guy. Okay, these guys should bleed to death. Perfect. Heal him back up. Fuck yeah. That crit also, because it's a critical heal, reduces stress, stress a little bit. Generally just fucking useful. What is this? Uncommon, debuff, move. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and carry it. That's fine. Uh, he's not bleeding still, is he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, bandages for that. And, uh, like I said, the, the inventory kind of... What? I thought we... There we go. Uh, sorry. I probably missed it, but what ends up happening sometimes is if characters are masochistic or some or paranoid or whatever, they will refuse help for different reasons. Um, he probably refused help on that one just because he... Okay, yeah, dive at it. Oh, great. Bloodthirsty. That's actually not that bad. Uh, right. Cut some bitches. And purpose is made clear. <sighs> I don't know how you dodge a shriek like that, but okay. 
Also, it didn't really seem to affect anybody, so... A dizzying blow to body and brain. <sighs> There we go. Worry stones aren't bad. Uh oh, because he's paranoid. He's affecting everybody else's stress. Oh, there's that heart attack. So he hit 200, lost about 23 stress, and went down to zero health, and automatically hits death door, which. Sucks, not gonna lie, but that's the the capped out stress mechanic that we were talking about there. Speaking of, he also just had a heart attack, so everybody else's stress goes up. Cut him real quick. Look at that bleed stacks. That store. Okay, he's not dead yet. Go ahead and use him to heal the other guy. No, we won't because he doesn't want his help. So we'll just go ahead and have him heal up. Well, he's not bleeding, so he's not dead, which is fine. Meanwhile, we'll keep have him bleed. Let's see if we can't heal him this time. Crit of six. That is awful. Weird. No! He's at death's door again, but he's not dead yet. He does have a heart attack, so he might die of a heart attack right now? Yup. Stress is not a forgiving mechanic. Um, you can and will lose dudes to it on a regular basis. But, that it, like I said before, it completely changes the way this game functions. Um... Without the stress mechanic, this is just a boring dungeon crawl with an interesting uh, gothic horror aesthetic. Which, I'm going to be wrong, I like gothic horror, it's really nice, but at the end of the day, it doesn't support the game on its own. Uh, you have to have some sort of gimmick to make a game a game. And I think the stress mechanic is probably one of the better ways to handle this. Um, if nothing else, it's a good way to get across that... Uh, what they intended, uh, from what I understand. It's not really actually that Lovecraftian. Like, it is, but all of that is sort of in the background. Um, cause, like, yeah, you've got the, the Cthulhu style, like, strands and whatnot, but you've also got, um, like, well, yeah, I guess it's a little bit more Lovecraftian than it is Gothic, but it's set in that Gothic horror time frame, so it's kind of a, kind of a two-step on that one. I'm probably going to lose all these guys, but whatever. Uh, what? You're a masochist. You don't like looking at everybody else being all fucking goopy. Whatever. I'll just have him move back. Fuck it. I feel like they should make it so he shouldn't move back that time, but... You literally fight the... Whatever. You get, the, you get what I'm saying, though. It's set... It's set in a time frame. There's that fucking heart attack. It's set in a time frame where it's not really considered Cthulhu or Lovecraftian. It's well, I guess really it's it's more of a co they're calling it cosmic horror now. I guess not Lovecraftian, but whatever. It's weird that I hope these guys die. Death store again, probably bleeding. Likely gonna bleed out. Minus two is healing received. Syphilis? Okay. Feel like maybe that was a swing and a miss on their part. Um Okay. So he doesn't want anything. Well, this guy's the only one that's gonna live, so let's go ahead and buff him up. Yep, there he goes. Totally dead. More ashes. More disappointment. Hmm. <sighs> 
the choice of setting it in a medieval time frame was really uh, clever on their part. There we go. That white glow, the shine, reduces uh, stress for everybody else a little bit too. Like, it's it's helpful. It it adds to the stress. Luckily, the game does not actually stress you out that much. Otherwise, it would be worse than StarCraft to play. But, it's still pretty fun. How are you not dead yet? There we go. Vomit. Creeping. This guy is going to be a petri dish if he survives this. Some more stuff. God damn, how many fucking diseases does he have at this point? Vigorous heals him every turn. That's really... Er, on occasion. That's really nice. Oh, he swaps them in and out. Cute. So he lost syphilis with a creeping cough? How does that work? Creeping cough just replaces syphilis. Nope. Didn't kill anybody there. Alright, so he's probably dead this turn. There it is. But he's at, he's at death's door rather than dead, so... Granted, there's three other people who could just take a swing at him first, but... There we go. No the Alright, and that is where we'll go ahead and stop tonight. Um, to hopefully next week we've got a little bit better... Uh, <sighs> a little bit better notes, so this isn't as all over as it was. Um... Tune in tomorrow for History with the Bard. We've been we've been doing a lot of Lovecrafty and horror stuff, a lot of gothic horror stuff lately. Um, I'll probably pick up something for that. Let's see. We could do Dracula, I guess. Uh, and by Dracula, I mean Vlad Tepesh. Um, one of the few times that the the uh, myth is not more fascinating than the man. Vlad Tepesh is a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, that's what we'll do tomorrow. We will do history on Vlad Tepesh to keep up with this this theme that we've been going on. I just lost three, or I lost three level four characters to make a point tonight. Hope you guys are fucking happy, all one of you. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, uh, and I hope to see you tomorrow for when we talk about Vlad Tepesh. Uh, you know. Should probably consider uh, not showing up if you're a little queasy, cause it's gonna get it's gonna get brutal. It's gonna get pretty metal. Vlad Tepesh did not fuck around. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, and hope to see you guys again soon. Bye bye.